Harry Potter, the boy who lived. Calling all witches and wizards, just three weeks ago, Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald came to theatres, and all of us, muggles and all, were thrown back into the magical world once again. I have some big news. We will have a whole new AR game named Harry Potter Wizards Unite in 2019. The wizarding world needs your help. But before all of this, let's quickly review the 20 years of history of Harry Potter games just to bring you up to scratch on what is going on. We will first discuss the game from the EA industry, which came out with the Harry Potter movie series from 2001. One of the games that had come out was the movie Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. That was released in 2016, named Fantastic Beasts Cases of the Wizarding World. The other you might still play on your phone. It's called Harry Potter Hogwarts Mystery. Ah. And don't forget the upcoming issue, Harry Potter Wizards Unite. The first game of HP that everyone must already know will be the real classic, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. It was on both PC and PS. This is the first installment for the HP fans where they can immerse themselves into the reality of the wizarding world. I was really impressed by the difference between the PC and PS version. It was not only the graphics, but also the storyline and the game itself that differed from each other. It was so amazing that EA spent so long perfecting this game. The PC game of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, the first edition, started its opening animation on an old yellow book. This information told us that the introduction was about before Harry going to Hogwarts. It's a pity that we can't start playing where we enter Diagon Alley or King's Cross Station. It would be great if we had an open world game where we get to play in Diagon Alley. I really hope someone makes it. Finally, we enter into Hogwarts. The story will start after the house sorting ceremony. It's a pity once again that we can't go through the sorting hat ceremony, but actually we are all Harry in this game. The disappointing factor is that we can only be in Gryffindor and don't have a choice in what house we want to be sorted into. The first thing we learned was the jump. Fred and George Weasley would teach us jumping and give us Bertie's bots of every flavoured beans. Then they will guide us to the first class, which is defence against the dark arts. What happens in this class is really special. We will draw the shape of a spell and use the spell to move objects or fire on a target. After the practice is finished, we will get into the challenging path. We need to use the spells we learn to cross all barriers in this game. It will not be an easy way my fellow Hogwarts classmates. And all the spells we learn in class will end with the challenge in which we put those spells to the test. Just like the movie, we learn spells and then join the Quidditch team and triumphantly grab the golden snitch for the win. We will find out a secret in the third floor walkway. Hmm, I wonder what that could be. Oh no, it's time to fight Voldemort! We will cross the magic stages throughout the game by the help of the professors and in this game they make the stages playable. My personal favourite was when Harry grabbed the keys while riding a broom full of flying keys. Now that was the best part. Now killing Voldemort was very hard. We need to use both the spells and an erased mirror to defeat him. Once you have done all of this and passed all the stages, then alas, congratulations, you have passed the levels of this game. This game was the start of all Harry Potter installments. Also, it was the very first PC game to come out for some young players, just like me. After many years, we still love this game and never forgot the first time we played as Little Harry to enter the magical world. The second episode of the game, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Now, the PC version had the same graphic layout as episode 1, however the PS2 version is totally different from the PC version in so many ways. Not only are the graphics a higher quality, but also the game playing starts at a different time in this version. The PC version still starts at the school, while the PS2 version starts at Ron's home. This upgrade from the first game was a great feature in the new installment. 
From the third installment, which is Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, both PC and PS had great voiceovers which made the game more vivid. Also, this time we can play not only as Harry, but also as Ron and Hermione. The PS2 installment had many more functions to choose from, such as we can drag and pull objects or characters, while the PC version we can only use the mouse and keyboard to play lesser functions. Turns out that the PC version is easier to pass than the PS2, but I'll let you be the judge of that. For example, we only need to cast spells on the train to defeat Dementors on PC, but while on the PS2, we need to play Ron dragging a fainted Harry while casting spells. Moving on to Episode 4, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. This game was totally an abnormal one within all the series. The graphics were just like RPG mobile games. We have the chance to choose whatever character we want to every time before we enter a new fight stage. We can even arrange the formation of fighting which is super cool. After we choose one character, the PS will automatically help us control the other two characters. This will be a voiceover guide for us while playing. It was really amazing, however, the new style of playing receives both positive and negative comments. Some players thought that this was the strangest within the whole series, losing the main feature of the Harry Potter game franchise. Episode 5, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix starts to follow the movie's storyline perfectly, but the game itself became really boring in my opinion, and didn't have the same effect as the previous games. It's like we just play as Harry and make him run around the school, doing nothing. The whole game is too messy and no story mode doesn't fit the Harry Potter games. To me, Episode 6, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince game is way better than number 5. In this game, Harry acquires a textbook which belongs to the Half-Blood Prince and Sora's making potions like true potion masters. Love potion, anyone? This game gave us true feelings of being at Hogwarts and playing as true students. Overall, I enjoyed this game in its story mode. To me, this is interesting as we can play and be happy to be free around the game once again. We can run all through the campus and see of Hogwarts perfectly while running and moving around the game. After completing all stages of the game, the character can move on to collecting all the school badges. The first time I entered Episode 7 Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, I thought I had opened up a horror game. Okay, it was not much of a horror game at all. To be honest, the overall tone and the graphics were really modern. I mean, compared to the former episodes. The story starts at Hagrid's hut and the other members of the Phoenix came to Four Privet Drive to collect Harry. On the way to Ron's home, they encounter a Death Eater's attack where they would battle their way out to survive. One good thing is that we can use more and more spells and even select the spells we want to use. Also, we can play all the fights that appear in the movie. It was like we were in the remake of the movie ourselves. It was truly amazing. I personally felt that episode 7 was exciting for players and super Harry Potter fans alike. It did great at both game playing experiences and story representation of all the Harry Potter series. Now, after we clear all the stages in Series 7, Harry will fall into a pensive and go through the game scenes from 2001 to 2011. 10 years. While I think about it, I feel like the game industry just changed so fast over a short amount of time. It's true, time flies. <laughs> Get it? Just full of memories. Okay, we have finished talking about the EA HP games. Keep a lookout for the next installment of part 2 of the Harry Potter gaming journey as we will introduce and explain about the LEGO HP game and Pottermore VR games. We will talk about two mobile games and after the Fantastic Beasts Where to Find the Movie, Fantastic Beasts Cases from the Wizarding World. Then we will talk about the Harry Potter's latest game, Harry Potter Hogwarts Mystery and also the new game Harry Potter Wizards Unite which will be released sometime in 2019. You wouldn't want to miss it as we have all the inside information for all you fellow witches and wizards. Until next time, mischief managed.